this is part of our skills match program um, that business in the community are working in partnership with NECFA on, and it's supported by the Department for Communities. And the whole premise around skills match is to build the skills and capacity in the voluntary and community sector with the skills and experience of the business sector. So we're a membership organization. We have lots of businesses um, in our membership, and they're so keen to help and to work with local communities and local charities. And I, this program has been running for about three or four months. And there's been some amazing stories just in terms of how local businesses are helping local charities. Um, only last week, we had a call out from Marie Curie. They wanted 20 volunteer van drivers. Um, I went back to them yesterday with 80 names, um, which is just incredible. And I guess it just shows the, the extent of um, Northern Ireland's generosity. So there's some fabulous things happening. So this webinar this morning is part of that program, Skills Match. Um, so I guess if you are a community group or a charity and you feel as though you would benefit from some skills or some advice in terms of um, linking into businesses, please do get in touch with myself or Angela or Denise or visit the Skills Match platform, which is skillsmatchni.com. And also, if you're a business and you feel as though your employees could help your local community and charities, again, please do get in touch. You can actually register on the platform or what we're finding is that sometimes picking up their phone works just as well. And we're happy, we're happy with either. So, um, and this week, would be remiss of me not to mention, this is Get Online Week. And this is a big week in the calendar for business in the community. And I know Julie and Imelda, who are our hosts today, had to nearly squeeze this session in because they're so busy delivering sessions to local community groups and charities. And I have to say, they have been absolutely amazing working with us over the last six months in terms of delivering free sessions to people who really want to upskill um, and learn new digital skills. So I just want to go on the record, Julie and Melda, to thank you most sincerely because you've just always been there at the, at the drop of a hat. Um, um, so I, I am not going to talk for too much longer. It's five past nine. I know that you have a packed agenda. Um, apparently this webinar should take about five hours to deliver. So you can imagine the speed and pace that um, the, the girls are, are going to go through this. So just bear with us. We probably won't have time for Q&A, but what I would suggest is that you use the panel on the right-hand side to ask any questions. And myself and Angela can, can sort of moderate that if you like. So I think that's all I have to say. I am going to mute myself now and I'm going to hand over to Julie. Great, thank you, Hilary. Just let me share my screen with everyone. Okay, Hilary, can you see my screen okay? Okay, excellent. Yeah. So, welcome everyone, and we're delighted that you're all here today. And thank you to Business in the Community and NICFA for organizing this event today. My name is Julie McGrath from DigiSkills, and today I'm going to be co presenting with my business partner, Amel DeWard. We've been working as digital consultants and trainers for over the last 15 years, and between us we've uh, worked in large organisations and within many SMEs. We currently manage and direct three small businesses, so we understand the current and future challenges as business owners and consultants. Over the last five years, we've seen a massive shift in how we manage the workplace, how our staff communicate, and the tools that we use to operate effectively. COVID has catapulted businesses to think differently, adapt digitally, and develop creatively. Today, we're gonna to show you a range of communication tools you can use for effective leadership and project management. We'll show you an overview of the different platforms that you can use that have a free entry point, and we're no way affiliated with any of these platforms, so our recommendations are impartial. We'd love to hear your feedback on our presentation and send you a short survey. If you do wanna participate, please let us know. So if you have any questions throughout the presentation today, please put them in the chat panel and we'll try our best to answer them. So let's get started. We're all adapting to a new way of working. Lots of things have changed within the world, especially the way we work. So what has changed? We now have distributed teams all over the world. We're encouraged to work from home if we can. How we manage our people and teams are different. How we monitor productivity and results outside of the face-to-face -face work environment and the use of platforms and their effectiveness and how we adapt our communication style to effectively lead businesses through a time of change and disruption. 
We've identified three key business challenges. First being communication. And as a manager or leader, it is your job to keep all your employees informed. While it is simple to effectively communicate with staff members you see face to face, deskless employees must rely on technology so you can't let remote team workers become out of sight, out of mind. 38% of remote workers reported they had a lack of information from management to complete their daily tasks effectively, and 39% of employees say the timeliness of information were the biggest obstacles when working from home. The best way to communicate with employees is through technology. However, the multiple platforms are difficult to keep track of and information can get lost in translation due to this. The second key business challenge is productivity. When you can't physically see your employees every day, it can be difficult to track the amount of work they complete daily. While employees are motivated self-starters, some can take advantage of the fact that there's no boss over their shoulder. With anyone remote or not, it's essential to establish key metrics and goals. And due to the current circumstances, you should make allowances for flexibility and change the focus from outputs to outcomes. The effectiveness of outcomes allows employees to adapt different ways of working. And lastly, having a unified company culture. Employees collaborate best when they have a personal connection with each other to maintain this connection while working remotely. Small teams should have a short daily stand-up or conference call to discuss hot topics and unanswered questions. And a centralized platform where they can communicate freely and instantly. With that said, we're going to look at some of the platforms that can solve these business challenges. So one possible solution for this business challenge is the use of Slack, one platform for all your team and all your work. Slack is a channel-based messaging platform and with Slack, people can work together, together more effectively, connect all their software and tools and services and find the information that they need to do their best work, all within an enterprise grade environment. Slack has different price points. However, the free version is fine to get started. Once you get used to it, you can grow uh, with the platform and then decide if you require more features. The prices are based per user per month. Slack is the workplace where you work within and it allows you to share documents, links and cloud-based services. It also works on a web browser, desktop app and mobile app. The Slack for Nonprofit program offers a free or discounted plan upgrades to eligible organizations. So please check that out before you subscribe to anything. Slack's key features are, you can bring your team together in channels. A channel is a place for everything related to a project, topic or team. Everyone in a channel can see the same message and stays on the same page. You can share files and keep files and the messages about them together in a channel. You can connect on a call, Hi. so if you're working face to face, it is a channel with one click. You can collaborate with partners and work so with external clients and vendors and more by working within a channel. So let's have a look at Slack in action. Welcome to Slack. Slack is a new kind of messaging for teams, bringing all your communication together in one simple place and integrating with the tools you already use. What's different about Slack is that team conversations are organized into channels. You can create channels for departments, projects, office locations, anything you like. Public channels are open, so anyone on your team can pop in to see what's going on and join the conversation. Nice, great job, everyone. It's not just about messaging, though. You can also share files, images, PDFs, documents, spreadsheets. Look, I've got them right here. You just simply drag and drop them into the right channel, like that. You and your colleagues can add comments along with the document, making collaboration more contextual, transparent, and efficient. If you have a project that's confidential, you can create a private channel. Only the people you invite to the channel will be able to join. And if you need to reach someone directly, you can send them a direct message. It's totally private and secure. You can also send a message to a group of people. It's a great way to communicate with your teammates in a short-term, lightweight sort of way. 
Oh, this should be good. By the way, if you're offline in another application or just doing research, Slack can notify you when an item needs your attention. Let me get right on this. Everything you post on Slack is searchable. Messages, notifications, files, even the content within those files. Oh, see, there it is. Now, about those integrations I mentioned earlier. Well, with Slack, you can plug in many of the tools and services you already use and have notifications from those systems appear in whatever channels you choose. Oh, thanks, I think. Best of all, Slack works the way you work. So if you're on the go, you can start a conversation on your desktop and pick it up on our mobile device. Everything's in sync. More productive, more transparent, more efficient, and no more email. That's Slack. So hopefully that's given you an overview of how the navigation works within the Slack platform. So this is the Slack interface. You can see here on the left-hand side, you've got the overall profile. You've got uh, different channels that split into the marketing department and you can have as many different channels as, as what you want. You've got the options to share documents, instant communication via message and video call and so much more that we'll show you later on in the demo. Um, it's pretty much like a WhatsApp uh, business channel and each team or group has a channel. All information is shared within that channel and you can visit different channels depending on who you work with or collaborate with. You can add channels for teams, projects, and functions, and channels are one of Slack's core features and the best way to organize diverse groups of people that are working on concurrent projects. You can send direct messages to just one person. You can create a direct message with up to nine people. You can create a public channel where everybody can communicate within. You can create a private channel to send those uh, private documents, and you can add channels as your business grows. What we're doing is turning email inboxes that are fragmented and unique and turning emails to messages and inboxes to channels. You are changing your communication style from an individual first approach to a team first approach. It allows an effective flow of information, keeping everyone in that channel updated and working together collaboratively. You can have access to multiple channels, ensuring that your business is working together effectively. So let's have a look at some of the other key features within Slack and how you can communicate it effectively within your teams. Channels are one of the key features within Slack. However, there are other key features that are really useful for managing your time, communicating with your team, sharing documents, automating workflows and other app integration. We're currently within the Slack platform and you can see here on the left hand side that we are within a channel called leadership and communication. This channel has been set up for demo purposes. So once you have created a channel, you will be asked a number of questions to prompt you what to do next within that channel. So you can add more people. You can simply add in their email address or name. You can connect various apps within a channel and there's thousands of different apps that you can integrate within Slack depending on what process you want to work within. You can share a channel to an external business or person. And you can also forward emails to this channel as well. And this is particularly useful whenever you are running the likes of a social media campaign or if you have an inquiry form on your website for maybe a particular product or service. And it can be set up to auto send to a specific group or of people or within a channel or project. On the right hand side, you'll see um, my picture with uh, profile settings. You click the picture, you'll get a drop down menu. This menu shows your current status, whether you're available away on holiday or in a meeting. It can also be used to connect to your Outlook calendar or Google calendar to advise people of your status. So as you can see, anybody that's maybe looking to get in touch with me at the moment, my status will show that I'm away. but 
because I've also integrated my Google Calendar, it will allow people to click on it and see I'm currently in a meeting and I'll be available after 6.30 today. That way people will know when to expect a response or if they need to call me for any further updates. It is particularly useful whenever you're working with remote teams to know your team's availability and when to expect a response to a question or task or when is the best time to contact you depending on your availability. Within your profile settings, you can also pause your notifications and updates at a particular time. This is useful whenever you're managing your time effectively and when we're working from home or virtually, it is sometimes difficult to switch off from work. This way you can set boundaries and turn on your notifications or off um, whenever you wish to do so and disconnect from work and recharge. You can also do this whenever you're on holidays or in a meeting or if you do not want to be disturbed whenever you're working towards a different um, or a project or deadline. On the menu bar on the left hand side, it has the option to integrate with different apps. Now within Slack, this is where Slack transforms from an instant communication platform to an all encompassing management tool. You can cultivate conversations and inspire action. You can integrate services by building apps or workflows and Slack offers a couple of different routes to automate and enhance your Slack work experience. And we're going to show you that in a second. Workflows within Slack provide a no-code solution to automate routine tasks using predefined triggers and steps. And Slack apps also use a range of APIs to access a much deeper level of customization. And you can work, use workflows and apps on their own or in a combination as you need them. And as a business, we currently do both. We have eight apps and workflows currently integrated within Slack, and you can choose what apps you use depending on your business need. You can also choose what apps you uh, want to use within the messaging panel. And simply by clicking the forward slash button, this will open up a range of different options for you to choose. So if I choose to speak to Amelda, which is the other person within this channel, and I want to have a face-to-face -face conversation via Zoom, I simply click the forward slash and Zoom option, type in Zoom. And Zoom will intuitively set up a meeting within the leadership and communication platform. It will pre-populate a meeting ID and also a passcode. And I can simply click the join button and me and Imelda can have a face-to-face -face conversation via Zoom. Likewise, if I want to add a document from Google Drive, I can simply click the attach file, open up my Google Drive, select the file that I want to use. It will attach to a message and I can ask Amelda, please review. I better let her know that it's a demo only. So that will notify Amelda that she has a, um, a document to review. Also, if there was more people within the channel as well, I can ask the team a different question by creating a poll to capture their decisions or their points of view. So we'll set it within the leadership and communication channel. So what is the topic? Um, so if I'm running a marketing campaign or we need to make a decision within the department for, but for demo purposes, um, we're going to use a design option. Do you like design um, red or blue? Option one, we'll put in red. Option two, we'll put in blue. If I hit continue and create poll, that will be posted within the leadership and communication channel. Do you like design red or blue? And people within the leadership and communication channel can vote on what design they like best. So if there is maybe more people within this channel, 
they can vote that they like the red design better or that they like the blue design better. That way you can get feedback instantly from your team without having to have multiple conversations, multiple emails, and you can get feedback um, from the majority. I can also ask for feedback at the end of the day within the daily workflow tool. So this is pre-designed to automate every day at six o'clock and it will send out a team stand-up. So if I click the team stand-up button and open up my workflow builder, it'll bring me out of Slack and into a team stand-up. So this is set up to ask the team members to review their information and work that they've done on the previous day. What do you plan to work on today and any blockers that they potentially need work on. You'll also see that there was a custom form created for Imelda because I asked her to review the demo earlier on and I will know that Imelda can update any questions within this particular workflow and if she needs help with any potential blockers that I have within the document that was sent to her. So this can all be automated to be sent out in the morning, in the afternoon, and also for your team to update their progress on any given day. And it can also be set up in order to, for the manager or, or leader to have information on some of the daily updates or the projects that they're working on. So you can have a team briefing and it allows you to pull together information a lot more seamlessly than uh, emails. If we go back into Slack again, one last thing I want to show you before we move on is an app that we have integrated called Asana. And Asana is a project management and task tool. And we will show you how we use it within the organization. So if I want to use Asana, I simply click the forward slash button, type in Asana, and it'll give me the option. And Asana will ask me, what do I want to do? Asana is mostly used for creating tasks and task management. So for demo purposes, I want to create a task and I'll show you what this looks like within the Asana app separately. So what do I want to name my task? I'll set the task up as demo. Who do I want to assign it to? You pick whoever within your team you want to assign it to. What project do you want to assign it to? So at the moment, I have a, a to-do list that I will assign it to. Uh, due date, we'll set that for um, Friday and a description. And um, we'll create that task. Now I know that there's been a task created within Asana that I can manage the time, the project manage within the task, and we're going to look at Asana in more details. So hopefully that's give you an overview of the actual navigation within Slack itself. Those are, are the main core functions, and there's been some questions in regards to what is the difference between Microsoft Teams? Um, and what I would say is with Slack, it's an open source API, which means that you can plug in many different apps within Slack and really customize it to your actual business needs, where Microsoft Teams is more locked down. Um, so that's one of the key benefits within Slack. One of the other project management tools that is really useful is the, uh, the app called Asana. And Asana is a collaboration tool to manage multiple projects, boost productivity, manage any workflow and achieve more. Asana is also a web and mobile application and it's designed to help your teams organize, track and manage their work. So Asana is free for individuals or teams just getting started with project management. You can collaborate with up to 15 teammates for free. There are other options depending on your business needs and our advice is to use the free version to get started. 
some of the SANA's key features, you can work project and task manage and organize all your work into shared projects and lists or Kanban boards for your initiatives, meetings and programs. You've got forms, uh, you can capture right details every time for your project brief, requests and more. Forms are directly connected to projects so you can track submissions all in one place. You've got due dates, times and project start dates where you can assign dates ensuring tasks get completed on time. You can view Asana on a the Asana calendar or even on your work calendar. And task project communication. You can comment directly on tasks to clarify exactly what's needed to be done and team members or other work within Asana so everyone and everything stays connected. So let's have a look at Asana in action. All great projects have one thing in common teams coming together to collectively solve a problem. But without a system to manage work, teams move slowly, miss deadlines, and fail to hit their business goals. In fact, did you know that 60% of our time is spent doing work about work? That's where Asana and work management come in. Asana helps teams and entire organizations plan, manage, and automate their work. Teams can view their projects in any way with tasks in a list, board, calendar, or timeline. It's up to you and your team to decide what works best. But Asana can do so much more than manage projects. It's a work management platform where teams can build and coordinate end-to-end -end processes and where organizations can run their most important initiatives. With Asana, projects can be collected into portfolios where managers can understand deadlines, bandwidth, and risks, keeping your team on track while also preventing burnout. And with status reports that virtually build themselves, it's easy to keep stakeholders up to date. Teams can determine key milestones and dependencies so everyone knows how to get the work done. And with tools for collaborating, sharing files, and reviewing, teams can move work from intake to approval without losing information and always know who's doing what by when. Asana is where teams set up their processes so that they don't need to figure out how to get work done each time. Instead, they can solve the problem once and scale it right away. And with smart and easy to use automation capabilities, teams can automate repetitive manual tasks with clicks, not code, so work doesn't fall through the cracks. Plus, with integrations to applications for file sharing, communication, and reporting, along with our robust API, teams can make sure that work is connected no matter where it happens. At Asana, we're excited to connect the entire organization so everyone has the clarity to stay aligned and achieve company-wide goals. Millions of teams in 190 countries and many languages rely on Asana to plan, organize, and execute work. Ready to give Asana a try? Talk to us. So Asana is one of my personal project management tools. And Asana is used for project segmentation and prioritization of many tasks. Asana's focus mode is designed to let the company focus on productive tasks and once projects are broken down to tasks and subtasks, even the simplest assignment is followed by a name, a deadline, and its progress is tracked by everyone within that team. For each task, the user can upload a file either from the local device or from the cloud. Another key benefit you'll notice within Asana is that each project task and subtask will include in the activity feed where you can tag both users and groups supposed to use this information. Earlier, we created a task within Slack and asked Asana to set it up within a project. Once a task is completed in Slack, this is how it appears in Asana. You can see Slack, you can use Slack for everyday communication and combine it with Asana for project management updates. And you can see here that Slack has created a task within Asana with the information and due dates for completion. And once I start this project, I can move the task status from to do into progress and so on. I can also ask other team members to get involved if I need support on the task or project. So now we're gonna show you Asana in action and um, move on. So. Use Asana to map out projects and workflows like an event plan or sprint plan. 
you can create a project by clicking the orange plus button or save time using a pre-made Asana template. For this example, we'll use a project launch template. You can use sections to organize tasks, create subtasks to break up work, mark tasks as waiting on to show when work can start, and use custom fields to add more information on each task. Once your project is built out, you can assign tasks with due dates to your teammates, and as work progresses, check your inbox for updates on all of your projects. You can use Calendar View to stay on top of deadlines and workloads. Spend less time in meetings by using the status updates and keep everyone in the loop as work progresses. If you're managing several projects, add them to your dashboard for a quick view. Use dashboard reporting in Google Sheets to see where everything is. See what's on track and what needs your attention. So Slack and Asana. Finishing off. With the Asana and Slack integration, you can move conversations and ideas from Slack to tasks and projects in Asana. You can ensure quick question and action ideas that become tasks with assignee and due dates. You can create new tasks and assign it to yourself or a teammate and add it to an existing project. You can have daily communication within Slack for teams and project updates and milestones within Asana. You can list all of your tasks in the workspace and organize it. And you can receive updates on task creation, completions and comments. Effectively, what you're getting is a communication tool for effective leadership and project management. Earlier, we identified three key business challenges, mainly communication, productivity, and unified company culture. Using Slack to communicate and integrate different apps allows us to solve these business challenges. Now I'm gonna hand you over to Mel to look at different uh, platform that you can use for communication and product management. Hi everyone, I am Imelda. Um, so we're going to look at um, further platforms for productivity and this time what we're focusing on is on uh, the G Suite apps or Google Workplace. The best preparation for good work tomorrow is to do good work today. So it's always good to start with a little quote and really we're going to look at how this platform can actually improve work tomorrow by um, implementing tools that we can use straight away. Google Workplace is something that you may not have heard of just yet, um, but you will have heard of G Suite. Google has just announced a big rebranding and redesign for its suite of office apps. Um, most likely you will have used aspects of that already and it is very much designed and geared towards the office-less future of work. Uh, G Suite has been transforming business environment um, by boosting productivity and reducing costs for over 5 million paying businesses. And what's driving this popularity is that G Suite is a straightforward and highly multifunctional platform. Companies use it to organize tasks, connect with their customers, manage team collaboration and grow their business. So we're going to walk through the Google Workplace aspect um, and how to better understand and maximize your workplace performance and eliminate inefficiencies. We'll look at what's included, the functionality of some of the integrated applications, uh, primarily because time is against us and we couldn't possibly cover every aspect of that. Very briefly look at pricing and then also third party applications.
So in terms of what's actually included and what's available with this, um, it's a valuable tool for businesses of all sizes, charities, um, et cetera. Um, you really need to get the most out of G Suite in the workplace. And to do that, you'll have to understand the various components. That's an essential aspect to really uh, develop that productivity. When we look at what's included, we can see an array of applications which function to maximize productivity. Um, each of these applications will work in their own unique way, but they're there to help you customize your workspace, have productive meetings using communication tools, uh, share and collaborate with files, run efficient projects and increase your productivity. So whenever it comes to the likes of uh, email, businesses get custom company email addresses and unlimited Google group email addresses. So for example, um, the free Google apps account use, uh, that users would have are limited to a maximum of 10 groups. But with the business aspect, you've got um, a maximum of 100 members um, and unlimited groups. So this includes the likes of non-profit edition as well. And actually this is something that can be really useful for NGOs and for charities and within that voluntary sector, because if you meet a certain set of criteria, the um, entire platform can be free to use. And within all of that, there's included 30 gig of storage space for the basic plan. Google Meets and Hangouts both fall into the category of web and video conferencing tools and one, are one of the most useful products um, developed by Google. So Google Meet pr is provided to the users um, under G Suite, whereas Hangouts is available to anyone who has an email account on Gmail. The main difference between these two is that they are customized towards which customers they're built for. So Google Meet is industry based and with more advanced features. Google Meet um, is primarily, you can log into that by visiting um, meet.google.com or join directly from the app. Meetings can be done over voice call or HD video with up to 250 participants, and you can join any meeting with a meeting code. It is created by the Google Workspace um, users, but can be attended by any user, so you don't have to have a Gmail account to use this. The best part of this um, these apps um, and where Google Meet really stands out is because with each meeting you have a choice to join the meeting via either a web interface or if that's not available you can simply dial the number provided in the meeting invitation, enter the code and join the meeting without internet. So this is absolutely fabulous. Say for example if you have got a rural team or you have got um, issues with internet connection this is all completely alleviated through this mechanism. If all the participants um, on the, these meetings are there just to watch you, then you can use the streaming feature, which supports live streaming of your meeting up to 100,000 participants. So for example, this meeting here, it would be ideal for as well. Google Chat, uh, another function and another app within that is similar to apps like Slack and Microsoft Teams and is included with all G Suite accounts. So Chat is focused on ongoing conversations between teams in your company. Uh, you'll make groups that are focused on the team um, that you invite to chat. And threads, which are optional in Slack, are a standard means of communicating in chat. So every group is basically a series of threaded conversations. This app is deeply integrated with the rest of G Suite, so you can share documents and manage appointments right from chat. So much in the same way as Julie was able to show you that by forward slashing and Zoom, you can do exactly the same within this program as well. You can share Google Docs um, and chat will automatically update the share settings to make sure that everyone in your team can view that document. And then if you need to search for other documents or older documents that your team has discussed in the past, you can filter through um, the search by documents, slides or sheets to find specific ones that you have shared. Along with the new branding for the product that encompasses Gmail Docs, Meets, Sheets and Calendar, there are new features designed to make all those products feel like they're more integrated with one another. An example of this, um, of the new features, is a chat window that can spawn a document for everybody in the group without needing a new tab, as we previously discussed. And in Google Docs, instead of chasing one another's cursors around or opening up the chat window, you immediately start that video call. Now, the thing is that the idea of blowing up separate apps into little pieces that can be embedded isn't a new idea. 
So Microsoft has done some of the same thing with their fluid frameworks in Office. Um, but what's different about this, the press release quote from the vice president in charge of Google Workspace, Javier Soltero, is quite explicit. This is the end of the office as we know it. This is designed with distributed teams in mind. And what Google is hoping to achieve is that it can draw more users in with the convenience of a fully integrated service that doesn't send you looking for another tab. So really what we're saying is that not so much that everything is going on inside a live Gmail tab on the desktop, but whatever surface you happen to be using will be able to include elements from other work surfaces. So if you're in a Sheets um, document, then you can include something else from another one. Um, it's very desktop centric and focused on Google's apps inside the likes of Chrome. It probably won't be as tightly integrated on mobile devices to begin with. So in the same in the way that Meet is into Gmail, but that will improve with time because this is really Google Workspace has just been launched on the 6th of October. So this is really a very new platform in that sense. To get a better understanding of what I'm talking about, it's worthwhile having a little look at the video so that you can see how this um, all of these work together seamlessly. In terms of Google Drive, I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on it. There's a little video here, but Drive uh, integrates seamlessly with all of the different uh, apps within the platform and um, cloud native apps that enable your team to collaborate effectively in real time. So you can create and share content with your, with your team from day one with no need to migrate from existing tools. We're glad you joined Drive. Here's how you and your team can get started. Drives are spaces where your files live in the cloud. My Drive is your personal space for files and folders that you own. Shared Drives are for files and folders your team is collaborating on. Both My Drive and Shared Drives can be accessed from the web, on mobile, or directly from your desktop using the Drive desktop app, which works just like a regular desktop folder. Changes you make here are always synced across your devices and in the cloud. <coughs> Use the new button to upload files, create folders, or create new content with Google Docs, Sheets, or Slides. Drive supports over a hundred different file formats and works seamlessly with Microsoft Office, so you can comment, assign tasks, and even edit Microsoft files right from Drive. When you work in a Docs, Sheets, or Slides file, you're able to collaborate side by side with your team in real time. And version control is automatic for every file. You can see past changes and even restore a previous version by going into a file's version history. When you're ready to share your work, just click the share button at the top of any document or right click on any file or folder in Drive. You can invite people individually and choose their permission level or you can turn on link sharing so that anyone with the link can view or comment on the file. That's it. Happy collaborating. Okay, so the next aspect we'll look at is Google um, Currents. 
So you can think of Currents as a digital bulletin board for your organization, which allows users to post messages to the entire company or to specific groups and organizations within the company, as well as direct messages to specific coworkers. Um, one of the key concepts in Currents is a stream which you see down on the left-hand side here. Um, streams are created by administrators to bring focus to posts related to important topics. And a stream might be created to capture information about anything from an annual performance review to an upcoming campaign. Users can find all their streams and switch among them from the navigation pane on the streams homepage. Currents uh, is also an aspect of uh, and supports community or sorry communities. It is an aspect of currents, and it's specifically curated um, groups that can post about specific topics. So these can be focused on particular business goals or can be extracurricular interests to help coworkers bond. So really, if you kind of think of this as a Facebook um, for business, and the idea is to keep people engaged and to really. Um, ensure that productivity um, it, and people stay focused on the agenda, but also making sure that they have that social element, which really helps to draw back into that bonding aspect. Streams also makes extensive use of tagging and tags let coworkers quickly find and browse posts of interest. So administrators and users can create tags and add them to posts. When users create posts, they assign those tags and then there's a search box which allows you to search for them. So for example, marketing, promotion, digital, etc. So if you search in that, um, you will be able to bring up those that are most relevant. With Google Sites, you can create high quality sites for your team, a project or an event. And the whole uh, idea behind this is that it requires no, program, no programming or design skills. So Sites makes it really simple to display your team's work with easy access to all your content from Google Workspace, whether that happens to be in a drive folder, a document or a shared calendar. Carefully created themes help you uh, your content stand out. So Sites intelligently optimizes work so that it looks great on the desktop, tablet and mobile. Creation and editing is actually really simple. It's a click, drag or drop exercise and the design will be rearranged automatically within a grid layout. So everything fits into the best place and is simple to move, resize or rearrange. Sites, again, like the other aspects, makes collaborating easy with real-time co-editing in the same powerful share controls that go on within Drive and Docs. So you can work together to see each other's changes in real time. People outside the company can access your site even without a Google Workspace account. And you can also opt to restrict access through the sharing settings. Now, one of the things that um, potentially many people don't have is a website. And again, Google will actually help and talk through the steps to purchase a domain name through one of the host partners. You can walk through this during sign up and then you simply select the option to buy a new domain. Um, and again, you can get support to build that as well, which is a fabulous feature, especially if you are wary of not having the skills that you need to be able to develop a website. Um, with Google Keep, which is another uh, feature within this program, um, you can capture your ideas with voice, add images to notes, check tasks off um, your to-do list. And then you also have the option to create, share and collaborate once again with people on notes and lists. So Keep, the idea is to synchronize across all of your devices so that your notes and lists can go with you wherever you are. Um, what you see on the screen here on the left hand side is the mobile version, how it's laid out and then the web version of that as well. You can organize your notes with color labels, um, et cetera, and find the notes really, really fast through the search as well. One thing to note is that Google Keep is not a full featured program management tool. So for example, like Microsoft Project or Zoho, However, Google Keep offers a really useful feature or really useful features for simple projects and task management. Um, the advantage is that it is simplified, but the option for third party apps for project management is available. And as well, Google Sheets also has uh, Gantt charts embedded within that as well. So that can be really useful in that instance. I'm conscious of time, so I'm not going to spend much time on the pricing here. You can see the different um, options that are available. And with each of those, um, it increases in terabyte space um, in participants in video meetings, etc. We're going to have a little quick look here at Google Cloud and how it actually works for the business aspect.
Fundamental to every business and every worker is assembling the information needed in order to make informed business decisions. The problem is that in reality, employees waste a lot of time looking for information, resulting in inefficient and unoptimized decision making. What if finding the information you need to perform your job were as easy as using Google? With Cloud Search, Google brings all the benefits of the Google Web Search Engine to your business by organizing all of your company's information and making it universally accessible and useful. The result is greater speed and better decision making, all while ensuring the full breadth of integration and security controls that enterprises demand. Available in a standalone product or bundled as part of G Suite, Cloud Search drives greater insights and business productivity by powering enterprise search for your business, leveraging context at the user, company, and content and application level. This is critical for all information intensive industries, spanning from healthcare, retail, media and entertainment, financial services, manufacturing and government, just to name a few. So, how does it work? Cloud Search offers built in applications that can be used out of the box. You can also easily build your own application using our rich set of APIs. We supply reference connectors and have an extensive partner network that can help build connectors to pull in data from any system. File shares, your CRM, systems in Google Cloud, or in any cloud. Your G Suite documents are automatically searchable as well. Cloud Search offers many benefits, including enterprise-wide search for all of your business systems, hardened security, which transparently reflects the controls from your underlying systems, international support for over 100 languages, a zero administration fully managed service that can handle billions of documents, and compliance support. And because it runs on the Google Web Search infrastructure, your customers get the scalability, performance, reliability, and security they've come to expect from Google. Start transforming the way people work and make business decisions. Bring the best of Google Search to your business today with Cloud Search. Um, finally, we're just going to look at the third party uh, integrations. So if we look at Google Marketplace, and I typed in for this image here, uh, project management, what you get is an opportunity to browse all the different apps available to you. Now, there are thousands of these. Um, everyone knows about uh, kind of the, the productivity apps that we've just discussed there. So they're easy to use for and improving constantly. Um, outside of the core productivity functions though, um, some of the offerings that you have, so we mentioned the fact that uh, the likes of project management is not something that's integrated into the Google workspace. It's a very crowded space. And whenever you bring this up, you can see Kanban Chi, um, we have Trello, etc. So with these, um, and the fact that they are integrated, you can just download these and run them side by side as if they were part of the entire program. Asana is another great project management app, which we've already covered. The most important thing that I'd like you to take away from this is the ability that you have to choose a platform based on your needs and tailor it to the and tailor with the integration of whichever productivity tools are most appropriate for your organization. So that could be anything from sales and CRM, admin, project management, or marketing. There is without doubt something to accommodate everybody's needs. I realized that was a huge amount of information. Um, so thank you very much for your patience in running through all of that. I'm going to hand over to Sandra, um, I believe just uh, to wrap up. Thank you very much indeed. Brilliant, Julie, thank you. Sorry, Julie and Imelda, thank you so much. That, that I, I'm, I've just learned a whole dictionary full of words now that I never knew existed. So Asana, Google Keep, Google Meet, it's just, my goodness, it's, it's astounding what, what's out there actually, but thank you so much. I appreciate that that was an awful lot to cover. Um, but I know that if anyone is interested, they can go back to you or they can come through ourselves in terms of asking for a follow-up session, which I, I feel maybe maybe on the card. So a big, massive thank you. And, and for everyone who's attended this morning, you'll be receiving an evaluation form. So if you wouldn't mind completing that for us, um, particularly as we need to return it for funders as well, just to show that you were all here and just to rate your experience. And I guess if there's anything else that you would like us um, to, to cover in these series of webinars, that would be very much appreciated. 
So I'm going to hand over, sorry, just to Sandra. Sorry, Sandra, I jumped in there ahead of you, but I'll hand over to you now. Great, thank you so much, Hilary, and uh, thanks again to Julian Mail. Uh, my mind is is boggling now. I'm going to have to watch that recording uh, later on to to take more notes and to put some of that stuff into action. So thank you both uh, so much. Um, as as Hilary said at the beginning, this is the part of the Skills Match program, and please for all of you who are on, I know there was about. Uh, 65 people on there earlier or 67 maybe please do register for skills match um, it's a great resource for you to connect with people who can help you and get in touch with Julie and Mel as well for follow-up um, we have other webinars coming up really soon and um, we have on the 5th of November one on board positions we have one on the 7th of November 17th of November on uh, the blended approach to working and one on the 1st of December on online events so um, please take this opportunity to uh, go online and register for, for all of those um, webinars. They really are so practical and so useful. So I think that is almost our time, just perfect timing there, Hilary, uh, to, to 10 o'clock. And thank you, Julie and Mel, for keeping to the time so well. I know that was a hard job for you when you normally have so much more probably to say. So um, two actions. One is sign up for Skills Match, register for Skills Match as soon as you come off the call. And the other one is have a look at the other webinars that we have coming up. Is that